I'm out here in the California desert, maybe a little overdressed, but for land navigation, I figured I needed to kind of look the part. Now, bear with me, this is a very lengthy video and maybe a little bit complicated for some people, so try to bear with me and let's get into land navigation. What's up my friends, welcome to a brand new video. In this one, we're gonna be doing some land navigation. So I'm all rocking the tactical kind of gear to kind of get the, the mood going and everything like that. But we're gonna be doing a little bit of basic land nav stuff, how to read a map, how the tools you'll need, a lot of those basic stuff, but also how to actually execute it, how to actually do land navigation. And I got a map actually of this area that we're utilizing to kind of show you how it sort of works, a little bit of how you might do it in the army, like in basic training or at some of the schools or anything like that, or even just at your unit, but also just in general. So if you wanna know how to do it for basic training, for your unit, for just something cool to learn how to do well then hopefully this video will be able to help you out now of course if you are not subscribed to this channel well you probably should be maybe think about hitting that subscribe button even enabling that little bell so you get notified as soon as new videos go live to include the live stream so let's uh let's learn how to do some land navigation shall we now we're going to start off with some of the basics the basics of how to kind of get yourself started how to plot your grids onto a map how to read a grid how to read a map all that kind of stuff but not super in depth with reading the map part of it also kind of be aware with land navigation there are some individuals in the army that will do this a lot and there are some individuals in the army that will maybe only do this once in basic training and then maybe never again so kind of keep that in mind there are some people that are going to be doing this all the time but you know you might be one of those people that may only do this in basic training and then never again so kind of keep that in mind but hopefully you'll have a little bit of a basic understanding of how to do some land nav and maybe even learn some cool little tips and tricks here and there from my video. So let's start off with some of the things you're going to need, obviously. First one, you're going to need a map. Preferably a MGRS or a Military Grid Reference System style map, which is what this one is here. You're also going to need a protractor, so that comes in handy to know what the scale of the map is, so you know which of these to use, which we'll talk about here in a little bit. You need a compass so that you know which way to go and be able to pull an azimuth from it. So you need a specifically a compass that also has the degrees on the inside here of the compass. You're going to need a pencil. You could use a pen, I guess, but preferably it's best to use a pencil. Some kind of 3 by 5 card or something to write on or something that has a straight edge as well because you're going to need the straight edge, but you also need something to probably write with. And then you're also going to need to know your pace count, which we'll kind of get to that a little bit later. So one thing to kind of understand is there are a lot of little symbols and little things on here that I'm not going to be going that in depth with explaining like what is a valley and what is a saddle and all that stuff like that. There are a lot of other videos that probably can explain that really well if you want to check those out. But obviously you can tell what are roads and probably what are rivers. So we're going to go with just the basics here. We're going to be looking at a grid zone designator here of what grid we're going to be going to. In a little bit I'm going to show you how to start from your grid and how to get that grid and everything first. But let me kind of show you the basics of how to use the map. So we're gonna use this grid here to find this point that we're gonna be going to. I have 11 Sierra Lima Bravo, which is just the grid designator for the area of the map. The main part we're gonna be focusing on is this eight digit here. This is an eight digit grid that we're gonna be utilizing to be able to plot the point on. So we're gonna start off with these numbers here. We have this seven zero and this three three. This kind of tells me where on the map to look. At the top of the map is gonna be this first part, this seven zero. So you would find on the top of the map where that grid is located at for seven zero, that is located right here. So that tells me anything to the right of this line right here is the seven zero grid area. Next is what I need to find is that three three area. So we're gonna find the three three, which would be from the left side of the map. So the 3-3 is over here, so that means I need anything above this is the 3-3 area. So the 7-0 and the 3-3, they meet right here, so that means this grid square right here is what I'm going to be working with. So now I need my protractor to pay attention to which particular one to use based on this scale of the map. This map is a 1 in 50 thousandths map, so that means I have to use this one here, and it is labeled right there for 1 in 50 thousandths. It's probably better recommended to use a 1 in 25 thousandths scale map because you get this larger kind of triangle here to be able to see the numbers a little bit better, but I'm working with what I got, and this is a 1 in 50,000 scale, so I have to use this guy here. So the way I want to utilize this is I want to be able to match the numbers up for the grid that I'm using. So I have the 70 and the 33. I'm working in that grid square right now. So first I'm looking at this line that you can see right here. This is the 70, so I want to match up the 35 that I had inside of that little number, which is right here if you want to see. So I have the 70 and the 35, so I need that 35, so I'm going to be trying to get it inside the grid square. So I want to line this up to match up to 35. Which, that gets me right about there. 
Next comes the 75 part of this grid, which is in that 33 zone. So I need to go up now to get that 75. So with this line still lined up on the 35 for here, I need to find 75 on here. And that is where I need to make my dot at. And that is roughly right about there. So now I have a little point on my map that I'm gonna be utilizing to try to get to there. Now, in order to get to that point, I need to know where I'm at. Typically, when you're doing land navigation in the Army, they're going to give you the grid for the start point so you know where you're starting from, and you just got to simply do the rest of the work to figure out where you're going to. So to save you the extra stuff of showing you plotting my known location as if I was given it like you would in the Army, I'm going to show you a little bit of an extra little tip as far as one way that you can probably figure out maybe where you're at if you don't know where you're at. So in order for me to figure out where the heck I'm at, if that was the situation, I need my compass. So I'm going to teach you a little bit about the compass, but basically it's a compass. Hopefully you know how to use a compass, but additionally on this compass, it has the degrees on the inside, which I really need as well. You got a little kind of magnifying glass here with a little line right there. So you can kind of close it up and kind of be able to, to see this is the style compass you'll probably be using, like, utilizing in the army, but you're going to be doing different methods to do it. If something's like the little method like this, where you're holding it down here and kind of trying to get lined up for the azimuth or for that grid or the degrees that you're trying to get. Or another way is holding it up to your cheek and looking through that little magnifying glass to kind of line it up that way. I actually like that way because you can see it a little bit better, but it's usually personal preference. Also a little bit of a tip, they usually recommend if you have a lot of gear, like maybe a weapon and other metal objects, it can kind of interfere with that compass. So it's best to download that stuff when you're trying to maybe shoot an azimuth or trying to, you know, get your exact location for where you're gonna be going to and all that stuff. Otherwise it can kind of throw it off a little bit, but I'm not wearing anything too crazy. So I'm not really worried about that. So in this scenario, we're saying that I don't know where my current grid is at. I don't know where I'm currently located at, but I can see some actual known locations out in my surroundings that I can find on the map. Something like maybe a road or a mountain, something along those lines that you can easily identify an exact location. So we're gonna use the example of, I can see some roads that intersect in my area. And that's what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna shoot an azimuth to those roads. And the azimuth is the degrees inside the compass. So I'm gonna basically be looking through my compass and I'm going to try to find that road that intersects that I can see and see what the degrees is to that road. So I'm gonna take note of those degrees and write that down. That is my first known location, but I need a second one that I'm gonna to need to utilize. So I can see another road that intersects out there. So I'm gonna shoot an azimuth to that one, look inside my compass, see what degrees that road is from me and write that one down. So once I have those degrees, those azimuths written down on a piece of paper, I need to do what is called a back azimuth to be able to figure out the triangulation, I guess, of where I am at. I believe this is called resection officially. So I'm gonna to try to figure out where I'm at based on where those lines cross. So I have my two degrees. I have 30 degrees and 320 degrees for those two different intersections that I can see from my location. But in order to utilize these on a map, which is grid north, I need to convert these from magnetic north because these are magnetic north type of uh, degrees and I needed to convert them into grid north degrees. And in order to do that, I need to look at the declination diagram on the map. That is located right here on this map. Hey, so jumping in here as I'm editing this video, I realized I didn't do a very good job of explaining this next step and I even made a mistake. So I wanna kind of correct that here so that you guys aren't all jacked up with this like I was when I shot this video. So let's talk about that declination diagram that you would have on the map. So it's usually located either on the bottom of the map or maybe even the right side of the map where it's going to have this little object here that kind of shows the true north, which is basically which way the north star is, grid north, which is what the north and south lines on the map are representing for which way north is, and then magnetic north, which is what your compass would bring up. So on this chart, it's showing me that the difference between grid north, which is the map, to magnetic north, which is the compass, is 13 degrees. Now, if I'm converting from magnetic north to grid north, then I need to add the GM angle. If I'm going to go from grid north to magnetic north, I need to subtract the GM angle. So the best way you can kind of look at it is kind of as if M is for major and G is for general. So in the military, a major to a general is a promotion, so you're adding. But if you were doing a general to a major, that would be a demotion, so you're subtracting. That's kind of a good way to kind of remember it. Now, in the video, I got it all backwards and I ended up subtracting the GM angle instead, but just kind of bear with me. I'm gonna show you the example, but remember that if you're going from magnetic to grid, add. Grid to magnetic, subtract, all right? So I make the mistake in here, just use it as demonstration purposes, what not to do, but also the general concept of the adding and subtracting kind of portion of it. It's just that part that I kind of screwed up of the conversion from the magnetic north to grid north, the other parts are okay. So that means this is going to become 17 degrees, and this is going to become 307 degrees. 
but I need to convert those grids now to a back azimuth. Now if my number is between 0 and 180 degrees, then I need to add 180 degrees. But if my number is between 180 degrees and 360 degrees, then I need to subtract 180. So that means this one becomes 197, and this one is going to become 127. And that is my back azimuth. So it may be hard to see on the map uh, from this angle, but just kind of keep this in mind for demonstration purposes anyways, because it's not going to be exact. It's really kind of to demonstrate the method anyways. So that first intersection it is a back azimuth of 197. So I need to find that intersection on the map and locate it inside this little small little dot that's at the center of my protractor. Once I find that intersection, I place the center of that right there, and then I take this straight edge, that's where you need the straight edge to come in handy, and I need to find 197 degrees. Also key thing, make sure the zero is at the top of the map for north. So I locate the 197 on the inside here for the degrees, line up the other part of this card with that circle so I get a straight line to that location, and I'm just going to make a little mark right here so that I can be able to draw a straight line. So I'll move the protractor out of the way, make sure that this part is still on that intersection, and we're going to draw a straight line to that little line that I made. And that is our first back azimuth. Now I need to do the other intersection. So for demonstration purposes, let's say that over here is where that other intersection is at. I need to do an azimuth of 127. So I find 127 now. So 127 is right there. I line it up with the circle in the middle and make a little mark right here. Move my protractor out of the way. Make sure it's still lined up with the intersection and the mark that I made. I draw a straight line. And if everything was done completed properly, where those lines intersect is where I currently am located at. Again, for demonstration purposes, it's probably really hard to see on camera where those lines are kind of intersecting. I also have some extra lines in there too from earlier, but ideally this is the method you would use is doing those two lines and where those lines intersect at is going to be where you are located at on the map. So now that I know where I'm at, like I said, when you're doing this probably in the Army, you're given the exact grid to where you're located at, and you're just plotting on the map like you did with that other point that I did earlier. But now that I know where I'm at, now I can try to plot how to get there. Okay, so we now have our two points. We have our starting location, which is over here, and then we have where we need to go to right there. So what I want to do is I want to draw a straight line from my starting location to the point that I want to go to. Draw that straight line. Sometimes it's good to go a little bit past it because you need a little bit extra line here to be able to read it on your protractor to figure out the degrees that you need to head in. Placing your start point on the center of that protractor, making sure the zero is north. You can even make sure to line up the, the lines with like the grid lines to make sure that it's straight. And you're looking at that line that you just drew and what degrees it goes to. So I can see from that line that it lines up with 280 degrees. So that is the degrees I need to go to, but that is true north for the map. I need to convert that still. So I'll take note of the 280 degrees. And that GM angle is 13, so that means I need to add 13 to my 280 degrees. So that gives us a 293 for our azimuth. Now I'm going to need to know how far is it from my location to the location that I need to go. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to draw a little tick mark from where I'm starting from to where I'm going to. So I line up just the edge of this piece of paper and make a little mark on here for the distance from my location to where I'm going to. And I'm going to use this to reference with a diagram that is on the map to figure out distance. So here on the map is the diagram for the distance. It is going to be in meters. So we're going to be using the meters part and I line it up with my piece of paper. And I can see it lines up exactly to 1.5. Each of these little marks here is 1,000 meters. Well, actually, this is 500 meters, then 1,000 meters, then 1,500 meters. So that is how this kind of gets read. So 1,500 meters is the distance that I will need to travel. Now, this is where you now need to know your pace count. I talked about this kind of real briefly earlier, but you may need to know now what that pace count is. Essentially, your pace count is how many steps it'll take you to get 100 meters. To find this out, usually your unit, you have something measured out. Maybe you have it 50 meters out and you're walking 50 meters to get your 50 meter pace count and you just double it to get your 100 meter pace count, which is the pace count that you need. Or maybe you have it even measured all the way out to 100 meters and you're walking 100 meters to get your 100 meter pace count. How that is counted is you're stepping off with your left foot. So that starts off with one. When you take your right step, you don't count that one. You count every left foot touching the ground. 
So you end up with something like one, two, three, and so on and so forth until you get to either that 50 meter mark or that 100 meter mark, whatever it is you're going out to. There's some individuals like to do a running pace count. Maybe you're in a hurry to do this land navigation course, so they'll run it to figure out what their running pace count might be. But train can really mess that up. Even train can really mess up your walking pace count, but it's really up to your scenario of if you need a running pace count, if you need both a walking and running or just need a walking pace count. So mine is 63. So that means I need to take 63 steps before I get 100 meters. Now for this example here, we need to go 1,500 meters. So that means I need to keep track of every time I reach 100 meters so I can kind of, you know, tick away from that distance to get an idea of how much farther I still need to go. There's a lot of different methods that people utilize to keep track of their pace count. Some may pick up pebbles or drop pebbles to, you know, represent every 100 meters they go. So if you have to go 600 meters, maybe you pick up six rocks and then every 100 meters, once you reach that pace count for this example, 63, once I reach 63 steps, I drop one pebble. And then if I have five left, that means I still have to go 500 meters or the opposite way. Maybe they pick up pebbles or maybe they move one pebble from one pocket to the other pocket, whatever you want to do. That's another method that you might utilize. Some people like to utilize what is called the ranger beads that you have hanging on your uniform and you're moving a bead up or down for every time they get to the pace count to represent 100 meters. However you utilize it, writing it down, picking up rocks, whatever, you got to keep track of how many meters you've gone and so you know how many more you still need to get to. So now that I know how far I need to go, now I need to know which way, which direction to head in for that distance. That's where this azimuth comes into play that we did earlier where we had to convert it from true north to magnetic north. So I have that azimuth of 293 degrees so I can use whatever method I want for holding the compass but I need to find on the compass 290 degrees. Once I've found it, I can kind of line it up with this little line that's here on this compass or just kind of look straight ahead with little notches at the top. And maybe try to find something to kind of aim for, something to walk towards that is at that degree. So you can either do it that way or you could probably sit here and just hold it at 290 degrees and just start walking in that direction, whichever probably works best for you. It's probably a little bit of a pain to kind of walk like this. So it's better to kind of find an object that hopefully it lines up with and just try to head in a straight line direction that way. Another thing to kind of take note of is you need to kind of be rechecking your azimuth quite often because if you're right-handed, you may tend to drift to your right a little bit. If you're left-handed, drift to the left a little bit, you know, that kind of thing can happen for individuals. So it's good to try to maybe recheck your azimuth periodically so you're not drifting off to the left or to the right. So once I have that azimuth set, I'm ready to step off and head towards my point. While I'm moving to that point, I'm keeping track of my pace count. So every time my left foot hits the ground, I'm counting one, two, three, keeping track all the way up until I get to my pace count, which in this example was 63. And I know that once I get to 63, I've gone hundred meters. But again, periodically throughout that step, I need to be able to recheck my azimuth to make sure I'm still heading in the right direction. And I haven't drifted to the left or the right. Now, along the way, let's say that we run into an obstacle. Maybe I got this hill back behind me. That's actually much larger of an obstacle than it really is here. And I need to navigate around that obstacle. Now there might be some times where you can just simply go through the obstacle and it may throw off your pace count a little bit here or there. Some options where you just have to actually go through the obstacle and you can't go around it, especially like if you're doing SFAS or maybe even ranger training. But in this example, let me show you how to navigate around an obstacle if you need to do that. So maintaining my azimuth, I'm gonna be coming all the way up to that obstacle. Once I've reached the obstacle, I need to kind of take note of what my current pace count was when I stopped at this point, because I now need to navigate around that obstacle. So let's say just for example purposes, I left off at 10 at this point. So I'm gonna be doing a left face from that point because that is the easiest way to get around this obstacle. And I'm going to go left in this direction. This is where it's good to maybe have a piece of paper or something to write on or whatever, because I need to take note of 10 being my pace count that I left off on, but I also need to take note of how many steps this way I'm going to make. So I'm gonna start walking this way until I can clear this obstacle. Now let's say I've cleared the obstacle, so I need to keep track of how many steps that was. We'll say for this example, that was 100 steps. Now I'm able to head back in that direction. So what I'm gonna do is, well, I have to keep track of that first off that 10 that I started off with for my actual pace count. Also keeping track of the 100 steps that I had to take to clear the obstacle. But leaving off from that 10 that I had, I can start counting again, heading in that direction. So we're gonna start counting again from 10. So I would step off with my left foot, 11, 12, 13, and I would continue that until I have cleared the obstacle and I can head back 100 steps to get me back on track. 
So keeping track of that pace count, still continuing it. If I'm now at maybe let's say 30, now at my pace count, because now I've cleared this obstacle, then I need to keep track of that. This is still adding towards that distance that I'm actually trying to get to, to get to my point. But I need to get back on my correct azimuth. And in order to do so, because I did 100 steps this way from that obstacle, I need to go back in 100 steps to reshoot my azimuth. So I need to now go back this way 100 steps. One, two, 99, 100. So once I've gotten back 100 steps from where I needed to be, now I can just reshoot my azimuth to the original azimuth that I had and continue my pace count from where I left off when I was trying to clear that obstacle. So if I left off in, let's say, 50, well, we continue from there. 51, 52. Now, eventually, once you've reached your pace count for the amount of meters that you're supposed to be going, whether it's 1,500, 600, whatever the meters are, you should be roughly at your location. It may not be exact where you're, boom, the last step is right there at where you need to be, but you should be in that vicinity and you should be able to see whatever it is you're looking for. A lot of times when you're in an army land nav, it's a sign, it's an ammo can, it's something physical that you can kind of see. In some cases, you might be lucky enough that the back of the sign actually has the grid, so you can actually check to make sure you're at the right one. And in a lot of other cases, you won't have anything but maybe a letter designator or a phrase or something like that that maybe you have to take note of. Now here's also another little tip for you. If you have to go from now this point to another point, some individuals may go ahead and plot that point from where they're at, from that point they first got to, to the next point. The problem with that is if you're not very good at land nav just yet, and that first point was wrong, well, all your points from there on out is going to be wrong because you are going to plot it from what you believe is the correct point. And if you're not at that correct point, your azimuth is not going to match up properly to where you need to go to, and you're not going to end up getting to the right location. So the right way to do it, a little tedious, but if you're not very you know, proficient in land navigation, you need to go back to the start point and plot from the start point that you know is correct to your next point. So ideally, you're going from start point to your first point, back to your start point, plot your second point, go to your second point, come back to the start point to go to your third point, and so on and so forth. If you are experienced and you've gotten really good at doing land navigation and you're pretty confident that that point that you've gotten to is the correct point, then sure, go for it. You go ahead and you plot your next point from that location, shoot the azimuth from that location, and move on. Just be aware if any of those points are off, it's probably going to throw you off on getting to your next point. So hopefully this video isn't too confusing. Hopefully it's you know explaining enough to give you a general understanding of land nav, maybe even a little bit more than a general understanding. I don't really know. You know, I'm trying my best to kind of give it in layman's terms and dumb it down as best as possible. And I may or may not have done that in a good enough way to understand it. Land nav in general is a complicated thing. Some people are really, really good at land nav. Some people are really, really bad at land nav. It just kind of depends on a lot of factors of if you're gonna be one that is really good at land nav and really bad at land nav. Me personally, I'm pretty good at land nav. Uh, I don't know if I expressed that well enough in the video to be able to help you out to explain it and understand it well enough, but you know, hopefully it does give you some kind of understanding of how to do land navigation. So it's possible maybe I missed some good little tips or whatever. If you have some tips and you're pretty good at land nav, then you can leave some tips down in the comments down below, maybe to help out some individuals that are looking to learn how to do land navigation for the Army or even for the Marines or whatever. All right, so that's it. That's the end of this video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did and found it somewhat useful, then hit that thumbs up for me. Check out some recommendations right over here, some other videos. I got some links down in the description for all sorts of fun stuff. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'm Christopher Chaos, and I will see you next time. See ya.